Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Aren't you glad we're going there one day? Going to heaven. Not going to be here forever. I'm so glad for that. Aren't you? Somebody praise God. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. <laughs> praise the Lord. Amen. I want our ushers to come if they will tonight. We're going to take up the evening offering. Let's give as God allows us to give and give with your heart. The Bible says, Give and it shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Shall man give in your bosom? But we've got to give first. That's what the Bible tells us. Let's go to God in prayer. Bless this offering, God. We pray that you bless it. God, increase it. Help us to give with our hearts. God, help us to give with our souls and give with everything we've got. We thank you for what you've blessed us with. But, Lord, let me bless somebody else. Touch us tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. our good sister over here to come do a sing a special for us then after that Hannah my wife and I were gonna sing then I'm gonna preach y'all pray for us Trust themselves alone to 
It's always a little, little different whenever the pastor's not here, but we're doing the best we can. <laughs> Somebody say amen. You know, I tell you what, I feel like I felt led for Hannah to sing that song tonight, and I'm not going to preach too long, but I'm going to preach what God wants me to preach. But, you know, it's no secret that we're new here. It is no secret. And I tell you what, we desire your prayers. Every single one of you, we need your prayers. We all do. And me and my wife, we had some hesitations. We were worried about things that were going on. And I learned to play that song. And it just come to me every time that we worried about something. Every time my wife had to get a new job, we're coming to a new church. My little girl, six years old, Caroline, she's going to a new school. We're leaving everything we know. And every time... My little girl got sad. I told her, you know, Caroline, God didn't bring us all this way just to leave us. That may not sound like much to you. I told my wife, you know, she, she put in her notice for her job and she, she was looking for a job in Gastonia. It seemed like nothing would open up, nothing that was, you know, what she needed. And I told her, I said, Hannah, God didn't bring us all this way just to leave us. And it doesn't matter where you're at in your life. Doesn't matter what you're doing, what you're going through. If God's going to take you somewhere, he's not going to take you to that place just to leave you all alone. God doesn't work that way, and God has never done that to me. God's not going to take you, and he's just going to leave you to fight your own battle. He said, no, the battle is not yours, but it's the Lord. Somebody praise the Lord for that. I'm so thankful for that. He's never going to leave me alone. There's some things that God will never do for us in this life. In one of those, he'll never leave us, and he'll never forsake us. He'll never lie to us. He'll never hurt us. And I'm so thankful that God is still God. He's still he's God in Raleigh, and he's God all the way in Gastonia and in Dallas, North Carolina. The same God that I've served all my life is still the same God that's bringing us through. I praise God. Good to be in the house of the Lord. Stand to your feet, if you will, for the reading of God's word. I feel like God's given me a message tonight. I pray that the church helps me preach this. I pray more than that, that God helps me to preach this. I feel like God's got a word for us. Aren't you glad to be in the house of God tonight? Good to see everybody. If there's any visitors, good to see you. At a John... The Gospel of John, chapter 14, starting at verse number 14. This is a familiar verse of Scripture. This is a hallmark chapter in the book of the Bible. This Scripture starts off, and we all have all probably memorized it, that we've been in church long enough to memorize things, that God said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Then later down we read in this Scripture that God is, uh, Jesus is speaking to his disciples, and he's got a word for them. And I feel like God's got a word for us also in John chapter 14, starting reading in verse number 14. Now the Bible says, now Jesus is speaking here. It says, if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. Verse 16, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Now notice this. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Verse 18, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Jesus is saying that to his disciples. Jesus knows that he is about to depart. And he tells them, essentially, he says, I am not going to abandon you. I am not going to leave you alone. I am not going to leave you as orphans, but I am going to send somebody to comfort you. Now look in verse number 26 here. The Bible says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. I want to focus on verse number 18. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost, the necessity of, of the Holy Ghost. He says, I will not leave you comfortless, but I will come to you. Jesus said, I'm not going to abandon you. I'm not going to leave you alone, but he's going to give us something to help us along the way. Let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we love you tonight. Thank you so much for your word, for your spirit. I thank you, God, for the Holy Ghost that you sent to us. We need you, God. We can't live without you. And God, you've provided a way. You provided a remedy, God, and you provided a help for us, that comforter, the Holy Ghost. We ask you, God, to help us tonight. Help me preach, and I pray that I'd be anointed with the Holy Ghost and somebody be helped, somebody be blessed, and somebody be refreshed here in the house of God. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Everybody say amen. amen. Now, when I, was, when I was 16 years old, um, I worked for a lawnmower shop in Fuquay, Verena, North Carolina. And I, we, there was a small engine company there. And we picked up lawnmowers from Walmart, Home Depot, all over the place and picked them up and dropped them off. And one of my jobs at 16 years old is I had to drive this big box truck, 26 foot long box truck, like a U-Haul truck and pick those things up and drop them off. And I just had my license, not driving very long. And, you know, I pulled into work one day and I got to that place and the, my, my box truck that I was used to driving was gone. And this big white truck was there in the parking lot. And I got into that thing and I sat down on the seat and the seat went up and down. It was an air ride seat. And I looked over and I had a horn that I could pull and, you know, it was an air horn and had air brakes and the whole nine yards. But I looked over to my right hand and there was a stick coming out of the out of the out of the floorboard. And I never learned how to drive a manual transmission my whole life. But I went there in that shop and I told that boss man, I said, I can't drive that truck. And he said, you're going to have to. And I looked at him and I said, OK, I'll do my best. So I loaded that big white truck up with the, with the gear shift and the horn and the seat and everything. And I had to drive that thing from Fuquay, Verena, all the way to Fayetteville. About an hour's drive in that big truck. And I never drove a manual transmission truck in my life. I didn't even know how to put the thing in reverse. I just tried my best. What I want to tell you, sometimes this world will throw you out to the wolves. You know, humanity will do that to you. They don't care about you. But there's one who will never abandon you. There's one who will never leave you. And I got in that truck and I drove it all the way to Fayetteville. And I was grinding gears the whole time. And I felt like I was burning up the clutch on that thing. And it felt like the motor was going to blow up on that thing. But I got all the way to Fayetteville. And I unloaded those lawnmowers. And I know it may sound crazy to you, but I'm trying to tell you something here. That man, they'll throw you away. They don't care about what you do. But there's a God sitting on the throne. And Jesus Jesus, just like his disciples, he said that I'm not going to leave you by yourself. I'm not going to throw you to the wolves. I may go away, but I'm going to send somebody to help you along the way. Amen. And I got in that truck and I drove it all the way back to Fuquay and I arrived safe and sound. But you know what? From Fuquay to Fayetteville and on the way back, I learned how to drive that truck and I've been driving those trucks ever since. But I tell you what, this world may harm you. This world's got bad motives for you, but God has another plan for you. I'm going to tell you, there's going to be a battle that you're going to have to fight there's going to be a struggle that may come tomorrow but you don't have to fight that battle all alone because you've got God on your side aren't you thankful for the master I'm thankful for the one who's driving my vessel he's the one that can, that's the captain of my salvation and praise God I thank you that I thank God that I've got the Holy Ghost and I'm not living this life alone amen and that house we got I was there, me and my daughter, the other night, and I was praying in that house, and I felt the Holy Ghost in that house, and I began to pray and walk throughout the house, and I said, Holy Ghost, you are welcome in this house, and I began to pray over those doors. I said, God, every square inch of this house, you are welcome in. Every square foot of this house, you are welcome in, and I say tonight, God, Holy Ghost, you are welcome here in this sanctuary. If you want to move, Holy Ghost, you can move. If you want to talk, Holy Ghost, you can talk, and if you want to speak, God, Holy Ghost, you are welcome in this place tonight. Amen. But I want to preach to you the thought, understanding the necessity, the necessity of the Holy Ghost. How many of us in this church tonight could say it's, 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 it's necessary? It is essential for us to receive our precious Holy Ghost and have it working in our life. Now, as a church in general, sometimes with our, our eyes of carnality and flesh, we can look around and we can, we can compare ourselves to each other. And you know, when I compare myself to you and you may compare yourself to me, and some of you are going to be doing that a lot lately, trying to figure out who I am, trying to figure out where, where I'm coming from, and trying to figure out who is this guy that's preaching on a Wednesday night. Brother Shortridge isn't even here. Who am I? But I'm telling you, I compare myself to you and you compare yourself to me. But the Bible says when we do that, we're not wise. The one we should be comparing ourselves to is God. Because when I compare myself to you and you compare yourself to me, we may say, I'm okay. I'm doing fine. You know, I don't need to step it up a notch. I don't need to go any further. But when I compare myself to God, when I get to my place in prayer and I start praying and I start feeling God, I find out that I'm lacking. I found out that I'm, I'm, I got a deficit. There's some things in, in this life that I'm weak at and I need God to help me. But let me not compare myself to you and don't compare yourself to me. But we need to compare ourselves to God. And when we do that, we find out that we need more of God. And we find out that we need him to help us every single day, every single mile of the journey 
journey. When I compare myself to God, I find that I am lacking. I find that I've been careless. I find that I have been slack. But instead of looking to me, instead of me looking to you, let's look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross and despised the shame and is sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. We don't need to look at each other, but we need to look to God. When we look at this world and we see it, the first things that come to my mind is that we need better political leadership. We need more, better education system. You know, these are things that we look at just practically in a carnal eye. But if you look at this world through the eyes, through the lens of the Holy Ghost, you know, when I do that, it breaks my heart in two. I find out that this world doesn't need more of that stuff. This world doesn't need no economical planner. It doesn't need more engineers. It needs more men and women who are filled with the power of the Holy Ghost that will come and bring a message of salvation to those that are lost. If there's one thing that this, this community, if there's one thing that this world needs now, it is not need more of the things of the world, but it needs more of the power of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. doesn't need more money. We don't need more political leadership. We don't need more education, but we need more of Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost. It makes the difference in our life. You know, when we're baptized and we're filled with the Holy Ghost, it takes the natural and turns it into the supernatural. It takes the believable and turns it into the unbelievable. It takes the possible and turns it into the impossible or the other way around. There's been times when I've lived this life so far and you have too. We've had the experience of the Holy Ghost. And you know, sometimes it seems like it's, it's so supernatural the way that God just moves in our life. There's been times in my life that I know it had to be the hand of the Holy Ghost on my life and on my family's life and on my child's life. It's a requirement for us. It's a necessity. It is essential for us to have the Holy Ghost. And I'll tell you, young people, every one of you, if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you need to get it. And I'll challenge you, you need to receive him because he is so critical for our life to live as successful Christians. And a lot of time we don't like to put that word on ourselves, successful, but you can be successful. You can live a life of victory. You can live victorious in this life. You can be an overcomer. Don't let nobody tell you that you can. Don't let nobody tell you that you'll be a failure. Let me, you can tell them that they're a liar if they tell you you'll be a failure, but you can tell them you've got somebody greater in you than it's greater than anything else in this world. And you can have the power of God that'll pull down the strongholds of this world. We need more of the Holy Ghost in our lives. Somebody say amen. Now, some people may tell you that the Holy Ghost is obsolete. The Holy Ghost has been superseded and the Holy Ghost died out with with the apostles. No, that's not true. That's that's a lie. That's not truth. I was studying for this sermon and I have a systematic theology textbook that's 1600 pages thick. I mean, it's a big book, popular book. A lot of people probably have it. And I looked at that and I was looking for pneumatology, which is the science of the Holy Spirit. You know how many pages in that 1600 page systematic theology book were dedicated solely on the Holy Ghost? You know how many pages? Two. Two. That breaks my heart. It hurts me. You know, there's been a neglect. There's been a lack of emphasis on the Holy Ghost. On our precious Holy Ghost that we have that moves and breathes inside of us. And the burden of my message here tonight is that we would ignite an emphasis. The fact that we need to place an essential notice on the Holy Ghost again in our lives. The Holy Ghost is not obsolete. The Holy Ghost has not been superseded. And the Holy Ghost is not for those that are, are low intelligence. And I heard, I've heard that junk before. Now I've seen doctors shout and praise God. I've seen lawyers shout and praise God. And I've seen them being moved on by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, I have. And I've seen a king. I know of a king that shouted before. And who was blessed and, and filled with the Holy Ghost. You know who that was? That was King Jesus. Yes, he was. Listen to this text here. The Bible tells us that Jesus Christ was conceived with the Holy Ghost. The Bible says the angel that stood before Mary said the Holy Ghost shall come 
come unto thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. And therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. He was conceived by the Holy Ghost. The Bible says the Spirit of God. Now next I want to tell you that Jesus Christ received this authorization and an anointing of God from the Holy Ghost. Listen to this. The Bible tells us when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying that the heaven was open and the Holy Ghost descended out of a bodily shape like a dove upon him and the voice came from heaven which said thou art my beloved son in whom I am well pleased the Holy Ghost in bodily in the dove of a, in the form of a dove came down and descended upon Jesus Christ and he was anointed and he was blessed with the Holy Ghost now next we find that Jesus I sent my spirit that you might have what I give. You might be strong in me. And I say you need my spirit. This world is in a mess. And if you continue in the way you're going, you will not be able to stand. You need my spirit because I will give you what you need. At the hour that you need it, I will give you the strength that you need. I will give you the guidance that you need. But you need my spirit. Seek me because I am not pleased that you do not seek me. Seek me and you shall find me and you shall be filled because I want you to have my spirit. That's why I sent him into this world. You are not living completely the way you should unless you have my spirit, saith the Lord. Somebody praise God. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ was conceived by the Holy Ghost. He received this authorization and anointing from the Holy Ghost. And Jesus was directed by the Holy Ghost. Now listen to this. And Jesus being filled with the Holy Ghost returned from Jordan. He left the sea, the Jordan River, where he was baptized. And he was led by the Spirit. He was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. He was directed by the Spirit. Being 40 days tempted of evil. And in those days he did eat nothing. He was directed into the wilderness by the Spirit of God. Now Jesus Christ overcame temptation with with the power of the Holy Ghost. Listen to this close, and I'm going to preach here in a minute. And Jesus returned in the spirit of, into Galilee and went out of fame of him through all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues and he glorified, he was glorified of all. So in other words, Jesus Christ overcame temptation. Then he proclaimed uh, the Holy Ghost. He came out of that wilderness with the power of the Holy Ghost. He was baptized. Amen. With the power of the Holy Ghost. Somebody praise God here. Now we see next that Jesus proclaimed the Holy Ghost as he entered into the temple. Amen. In Nazareth, he took out the book of Isaiah and he read the scripture. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he anointed me to preach. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Listen, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind and to set at liberty them that are bruised and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord and through the power of the Holy Ghost Jesus was able to preach he was saying in other words do you have any poor you can bring them to me in the power of the Holy Ghost I can make them rich beyond their wildest dreams with things that this world cannot afford he's saying if you have any brokenhearted bring them to me because through the power of the Holy Ghost, I can heal their broken hearts. Do you have any captives? Bring them to me. Because with the power of the Holy Ghost, I can help them and take them to a next level. And he says, do you have any blind? Do you have any barren? Do you have any weak? Do you have any lame? Just bring them to me. Jesus said, come unto me. Are you that labor and are heavy laden? And I'll give you rest. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I'm meek and lowly in heart. And you shall have rest unto your weary souls. That's what Jesus says. But he does it all through the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Jesus was a type of example for us. If Jesus was baptized in the Holy Ghost. And it was an essential prerequisite to his ministry. How much more would it be for us today? In this world that we're living in. We need the Holy Ghost church. We need the Holy Ghost. Now, do you remember Simeon in the Bible? This old man, Simeon. The Bible tells us that he was just and devout. The Bible tells us in Luke 2 and 25 that he was led by the Holy Ghost to the temple. 
The Bible says he was impressed upon from without, from the Holy Ghost to go to the temple. And the Holy Ghost spoke to Simeon and said, you will not depart until you see the Christ, until you see Jesus Christ, to see the Messiah. And Simeon was there in that temple, in that place, and he beheld Jesus. They brought Jesus and put him into his arms. And I believe Simeon looked down into the eyes of Jesus Christ. And then his heart leapt inside of him and he spoke with his mouth and he said now I can depart for my eyes have seen salvation and I thought about that little story in the Bible but it's not that little of a story it's a big story it's got great emphasis but what this story means and I prayed about this thing and I said God what does this mean this man Simeon was led by the Holy Ghost then he saw the salvation of the Lord what God implanted in my spirit and what God told me I believe what he was saying is this world is never going to be able to see Jesus Christ this world is never going to be able to see salvation like they used to unless we get a message full of the Holy Ghost anointing and power in our lives again you want to see Jesus yes you want to see Jesus and this world needs to see Jesus we need to be on fire for God again with the power of the Holy Ghost amen now what is the Holy Ghost some of us now this is a good church I'm not trying to say anything but a lot of people just don't know never had much teaching never had much preaching upon the Holy Ghost we wonder, what is the Holy Ghost? And when I first got saved, that's the kind of questions I had. What's the Holy Ghost? What is it? Who is he? The Holy Ghost is the most important person on the earth today. Let me tell you that. The Holy Ghost is the busiest person on the earth today. Amen. I believe the Spirit of God's walking through the prison corridors. Amen. I believe the Spirit of God is just going through the hospital hallways, touching those that need help. You may not believe it or not, just like Elijah said, open the eyes of my servant you may not see it but there's a chariot of fire there's there's a flaming fire around this perimeter of this sanctuary here tonight i believe the spirit of god is moving and coursing through the sanctuary here tonight because we believe in the holy ghost we have received the holy ghost and we know how important he is for our lives but unfortunately most people do not know who he is jesus said in his times they don't know me they don't understand me how much more in these times of this world not understand the holy ghost how much more? Some people think that the Holy Ghost is just some type of wind, some type of mystical spirit, some type of apparition or some type of wind that moves and, and blows and that's just it. But I'm going to tell you, winds, they don't teach you. Winds and apparitions and those kind of mystical beings, they don't help you. They don't comfort you. They don't guide you. The Holy Ghost, he's the one that comforts you. He's the one that guides you. The Bible says he's the paraclete. He's the, he's the comforter. He's the one that goes along beside of you in a time of need and a time of trouble. Amen. And what you believe about Jesus Christ determines what you believe about the Holy Ghost. Amen. You believe it or not, there's a lot of people that don't believe in the Holy Ghost. They will not believe in the Spirit of God. Now, they'll preach Jesus. They'll listen to Jesus. They'll talk about Jesus all day long. But the way they live and the way they act, there's no actually belief on the Holy Spirit in their life. Now, you cannot separate the Holy Spirit from Jesus Christ. And you cannot separate the Trinity because when you do, there will be a triple breakdown. It just can't happen. You may be able to separate it in your mind and your theology, but it just cannot be separate. Jesus Christ talked about the Holy Ghost. Jesus Christ preached with the power of the Holy Ghost. Jesus Christ talked about the Holy Ghost. And you can never separate Jesus' power and the power of the Holy Ghost. Somebody say amen. amen. Now many times, and I'm going to preach you in a minute. I'm trying to lay a foundation. Not only does Jesus talk about the character and the personality of the Holy Ghost. Jesus talks about the different names that describe the work and the personality of the Holy Ghost. God the Father has different names that we recognize throughout the Bible. We call him God. We call him Jehovah. Jesus the same way. He's the bread of life. He's the great I am. The Holy Ghost the same way. It's the same thing but we have different names to help understand them better. And that's the way God designed this Bible for us. Amen. Now, the first name that we find in the Bible is the Holy Spirit. Now, you find this in Luke chapter 11, verse 13. Now, why is he called the Holy Spirit? It's because there are spirits out there in this world that just are not holy. There are unholy spirits in this world. And their design, their purpose, and their intent is to take you to a place without God. 
There are unholy demonic spirits in this world and their goal is to rip out everything that you have ever had. Everything that God has ever done for you. Their design is to rip out your victory and to take you down to the clinch. And that's what the design of the, those devils are supposed to do. And that's what they want to do. Now Jesus Christ dealt with these unholy spirits many times. Now we find it in the Bible. The Bible tells us in Mark chapter 5 that Jesus came off of the seashore, the other side of the Sea of Galilee. And he was there in the, in the country of the Gadarenes. And there was a man there. The Bible says that he was a man who had unclean spirits. And he came out from the tombs. And the Bible told, told us that he would cut himself. And he would, he would be bound up with chains. And he would break the chains. And he would cry all night long in those tombs. He would cry. But Jesus saw him there. And that man came out of the tomb, that demoniac came out of the tomb and ran up to where Jesus was. And he said, do not torment me. And Jesus said unto him, what is your name? And that demon possessed man said, my name is Legion. He said, for we are many. You know what that word Legion means? It means great. It means a multitude. It means strong. It means powerful. Now let me tell you these devils and demons that are out there in this world that try to kill you and try to steal everything you've got. They're not a bunch of weaklings. There are harsh devils out there. There are demonic spirits that try to hurt your soul and bring you to hell. But the only way to combat those spirits is to be full of the Holy Ghost. The only way to take care of those demonic spirits is to bring the Holy Spirit to them. And that's exactly what Jesus Christ did. Now you take coldness. What is coldness? Coldness is nothing but the absence of heat. That's true. What is darkness, brother? Darkness is nothing but the absence of light. Same thing. What is, what is evil? Evil is nothing more than just the absence of good or the absence of God. Now, how do you defeat darkness? What do you do? you got to turn on the light. Yeah. What do, you do, what do you do to defeat coldness? You turn on the heat. What do you do to defeat those things that are evil? You bring them to God. And what do you do to defeat those unholy spirits that are in this world? You've got to be full of the Holy Spirit in your life. That is the only way it's going to happen. I don't care what this world tries to tell you. I don't care what the, what the devil brings up in your life. You and me and we all, old, young, young people, we've got to be full of the Holy Ghost because there's a devil out there that's trying to take away everything you've got. He's trying to tear, tear apart your mortal soul. We've got to get to a place where we recognize the necessity of the Holy Ghost again in our lives. First of all, he's the Holy Spirit. Second of all, he is the spirit of burning. Now, what does that mean? The Bible tells us in Isaiah 4 and 4. When the Lord shall have washed away the, the filth of the daughters of Zion and shall have purged, purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. Now listen to this, the spirit of burning. How many of you who have been blessed and filled with the Holy Ghost at times have just felt the burning power of the Holy Ghost inside of you? I remember the night that I was filled with the Holy Ghost there in that tent revival in Fuquay Varina, North Carolina. And I prayed and I sought God and I, God saved me. God sanctified me earlier. But that night I said it out in my heart that I was going to praise God and I was going to get filled with the spirit. And that night it happened and it seemed like my heart just caught on fire and it seemed like everything inside of me was just cleansed at that moment in time why because he is not only the holy spirit he is not only the comforter but he is the spirit of burning and he burns within my soul and you may not even be able to tell it tonight but there's a fire that is shut up within my bones and i've got to let that out and i gotta tell somebody about jesus hallelujah now the Bible says in Matthew 3 and 11, he says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Now on the day of Pentecost, there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Let me tell you, when when you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, you will speak in tongues. That's the Bible formula for receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Praise God. I thank God for our Holy Ghost, my Lord, my Savior. The Bible tells us in Psalm 104, it says he makes his ministers a flaming fire. Yes, he does. Hallelujah. 
They told D.L. Moody, they told him, how do you do it? How do you preach so good? How do you draw the crowds? And he says, I get there in my prayer room and I get in contact with God and I let God catch me on fire. Then I get behind that pulpit and the people come to watch me burn. That's what it's going to take this day. If you're going to receive something from God and if you're going to make a difference in this world, you got to set yourself on fire with the Holy Ghost and people will come to watch you burn. My God, that's my heart's cry. That's my heart's desire to see somebody be blessed and helped. Amen. Somebody praise God. Now, how many knows? Now, I love Brother Short Ridge. I love this church and I love the opportunities I've got here. But in a way, you know, Sunday was my first day here. Amen. And I'm here on Wednesday. I love Brother Short. I love Sister Short. I love the family. I love this church. Praise God. Can't ask for a better place here. Somebody say amen. amen. You can't ask for a better church. How many knows that God works in steps? God works in degrees. God don't start you out on level 10. Now, I don't mean this. I'm, just, I'm, go, I'm going on. Does, does this have nothing to do with what I just said? Y'all pray for me. God don't start you out off at a level 100. God don't work the way men work. No. God starts you off at level 1. Then he takes you to level 2. Then he takes you to level 3. So on and so forth. God works in structure. God works in organization. Aren't you thankful for that? Now, if you look in your Bible at Psalm 121 and thereon, continue for probably the next 16 verses. These, these, if you look at that scripture and you look at the heading above that, the Bible says this is a song or a psalm of degrees or a psalm of ascents. And what this means is that as the, the historical background and element to this is that the high priests were going into the temple on the day of atonement and the day of sacrifice, they would step up the steps and they would read one scripture. For example, Psalm 121, it says, I lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. That would be one step. Then they would step up and read the second verse. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. In other words, as the high priest read these scriptures, these scriptures would intensify. They would get stronger and stronger and stronger. Now, God starts us off just like little babes in Christ. And we drink the sincere milk of the word of God. But we are not supposed to stay on the sincere milk of the word of God forever. Eventually, we're going to move on to something that we can chew on a little bit. We're going to move on to the strong meat that God provides for us. God starts us off on level one. Then eventually, he'll bring us to level two. What I'm trying to tell you, God works in degrees. God works in steps. Some of us, we are, we, we're done good at step number one. There's churches all over this world. They've done good at step number two. But there's a lack at step number three. Amen. Somebody help me preach here tonight. A lot of us are saved. A lot of us are clean from the inside out. But there are a lot of us in this world, not only this church, but churches all around this country that need to be blessed with the next step. Amen. Now, the Bible tells us, or science tells us, in other words, that hot water is just hot water at 110 degrees. Hot water is just hot water at 210 degrees. But you take hot water and you bump it up that one step to 200, those two steps to 212 degrees. You know what happens? That water begins to boil. And you know what happens when that water begins to boil? It begins to produce steam. You can't do but so much with hot water. You know that? But when you got steam, you can do a whole lot. But that's that one extra step. What I'm trying to tell you, with you can do with steam, you can take that steam and you can power a locomotive. You can take that steam and you can throw it against the turbines and you can power up an entire city. You can take that steam and do great things that we never thought would happen with it. Just because of one degree, just because of one step. And what I'm trying to tell you and what God's trying to tell us through the conduit of his word tonight is that a lot of us are at step two and we need to move on to step number three because I'm going to tell you that one degree and one step, it'll make all the difference in our spiritual life. Some of us have been struggling. I, I was struggling at one time in my life because I didn't have the Holy Ghost. There were things that bothered me, things that annoyed me, things that aggravated me. But whenever I was filled with the burning fire of the Holy Ghost and I stepped it up a notch and I stepped up that next degree and I stepped up to that next level I tell you what those things that used to hinder me they didn't hinder me no more because I was full of the Holy Ghost 
in the power of God. Amen. Those devices that the devil tried to use against me that used to tear me down, they don't work anymore since I've been baptized with the Holy Ghost because what is the Holy Ghost? He is that one that blockades the, the things of the devil. He is the one that blockades everything of the enemy and he structures you and he forms you and he lifts you up and he takes you to a place that's higher than what you used to be at. Somebody lift your hands and praise God. Now, some of us got the fire. Some of us have had the fire and lost the fire. Don't do that, church. I'll challenge you. If you get the fire, keep the fire and let the fire keep on burning because when the fire goes out, you're stepping back, you're cooling down, and you're going back on God. But I'm saying increase the fire. Let the fire burn. Let the fire continue in our life because there is a work ahead for every one of us, and we need the Holy Ghost to help us in this life. He is the spirit of burning. Thirdly, he is the spirit of truth and the spirit of knowledge. Ephesians 1 and 17. The Bible says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Now this world is filled with lies. This world is filled with deceit. This world is filled with things that try to enter on our minds that warp our mind. Yes, there is. I was listening to a Christian radio station not too long ago, and you even got to be careful with that because they cannot control the ads that are on that thing. And I was listening to that radio station, and somebody came on there. It was like a new service announcement, and they said the FAA or the FDA has just approved that beer is good for your health and that we should all drink beer. And I thought to myself, who's writing this stuff? You know? Who's coming up with this stuff? And if you're not careful, you can't believe everything that you hear. You just can't do it. No, you can't. The devil's out to tear your mind to pieces. He's out to destroy your soul. He's out to kill you and he's out to hurt you, you and your children and your family. But the spirit of God, the spirit of truth, and the spirit of the wisdom of the Holy Ghost comes to combat that and throw down those things that the devil brings up. Amen. Now the Bible tells us that he is the spirit of truth and the spirit of knowledge. A lot of times, and I've seen it with my own two eyes, there is a lack of, there is a lack, there is a neglect, and there is a lack of the wisdom that we need to have as spiritual creatures of God. Yes, there is. And there's a lack of spiritual discernment. Amen. There sure is. Now, you, you, you've heard it on the news. You've seen it all over the country when demons. Devil-possessed people can come into the church, sit down on the pews, and nobody even knows it. Nobody even recognizes it. And it's sad and it's pitiful that that happens. That doesn't happen here at this church. This is a Holy Ghost filled church. This church has the Spirit of God moving in His place. But I know of churches where people have come in. The Bible says that the devil, he will dress himself up as an angel of light. And he'll come into the midst of the congregation and nobody even realizes it. I know churches that that devil has closed himself as an angel of life, walked into the church, and the people come up to them. And they say, hey, why don't you come sing in the choir? Yeah. They don't have no spiritual understanding. There's no spiritual discernment there. They don't have the power of the Holy Ghost in their life. So that devil, he'll come up there on the, on the, and sing. And then they'll say, hey, you can sing pretty good. How about, you come, how about you come play the piano for us? Yeah. And don't you know the devil, he loves to play the piano. Oh, yeah. And that devil get up there on the piano, sit for 12 months to a year, and nobody even realizes that he's full of the devil because they don't have the spiritual understanding that God gives. That's why it's so necessary for us to be full of the Holy Ghost so we can see with a, with a spiritual eye. The Bible says to anoint your eye with eye salve that you can see these things. And then they plays the piano for a while, and then that, that pastor that doesn't know God's not full of the Holy Ghost in that congregation says, hey, why don't you work with the young people? Why don't you work with the little children? And that devil-possessed person says, yeah, I love to work with the little children. Come on. And we don't, some, of us don't, some of us don't even have an understanding and an eye to see the spirituality behind that, the demons that are behind some of the works that come into the church. But what I want to tell you here tonight, that there is a necessity to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost in 2016. Because the devil is fighting more than he has ever fought. The devil is tearing down more than he has ever torn down. Because he knows that his time is drawing to an end. He's trying to kill your children. 
He's trying to kill your grandchildren. And young people is trying to take everything that you've ever had in your life. All the work that Brother Matthew's ever done here at this church for the young people. And they're going into the youth. The devil is trying to tear that down and break it down. But praise God, I tell you what, I'm going to pray as hard as I've ever prayed. I'm going to fast as hard as I've ever fasted. And I'm going to seek God as more as I've ever sought God before that I can help somebody in this church. Somebody help me preach here tonight. The Bible says that the devil believes and trembles. But you know what? Whenever we start to get full of the power of the Holy Ghost, you know what the devil does. He begins to tremble more, and he'll get on out of that place. The devil can't stand it whenever you start shouting. Amen. The devil can't stand it whenever you start speaking in tongues. The devil can't stand it whenever the choir begins to sing and magnify God and glorify him. The devil has to get on out of this place. And the devil, that's what he needs to do is get on out of this place. And if the devil's in here tonight, I rebuke the devil and I say, get behind me, Satan. Amen. Now what we need to do, and if the musicians will come, and I'm going to close here in a moment, we need to get full of the Holy Ghost again in our life. Now the Bible tells us in John 14 and 26, it says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Now he is the Comforter. How many knows that? He's the Comforter. The comforter means one that is summoned. It means one that is called to one side. A one that is called to one's aid. Thank God that we have somebody to help us. Jesus said, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. But I'm going to send somebody to help you along the way. In the widest sense, a comforter is a helper, a partner, an aider. He is an assistant. He's an assistant. He's one that helps us. Many times I've prayed and I said, God, would you send somebody to help me? Maybe somebody in here in this church tonight, they're saying, well, God, will you help me? Will you send somebody to speak to me? But you know what? God has already done that. God sent his Holy Ghost and he's moving throughout this church. He's moving in our lives. And I want to challenge you, church, and I want to ask you, will you be receptive more to the Holy Ghost in your life? Will you do that? How many knows that he walks with us? He teaches us. He aids us. And he helps us. If you're a sinner here tonight, he's searching you out. And he's trying your heart. And he's wanting to help you. How many knows that the Holy Ghost, he is the strengthener in a time of a conflict. And we're in our battles. He helps us. He is a lawyer that defends our case. He's the help in a time of trouble. He walks with us through the valley of the shadow of death. Wherever you may go, He is with you if you're filled with His Spirit and if you're filled with His presence. The Bible says, if I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, your Spirit will lead me and there you'll guide me. He's with you. He's with you. So many years ago, Jesus told his disciples, he said, I'm not going to leave you. Up. I'm not going to abandon you, but I'm going to send a comforter. Not many days after that, on the day of Pentecost, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spoke in tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. But before that, before that happened in the middle, you know what they did? The Bible says in Luke chapter 24, and they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And we're continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Not too long after that, that's when the book of Acts started. Yeah. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost. You know what connected Jesus' departure and the coming of the Holy Ghost? You know what brought those two together? It was one thing. It was the disciples' praise and the disciples' worship. Let me tell you, where is God? How can I get in touch with God? How can I feel more of His Spirit? I'll tell you what you have to do. You've got to praise Him. You've got to worship Him. You've got to magnify. You've got to adore Him. 
and I believe and it's an ironclad I'll give you an ironclad guarantee that if you are seeking the baptism of the Holy Ghost and you have not received it if you live a life of worship if you live a life of perfect litany and you give God adoration and praise like he deserves it won't be long before you are filled and baptized with the power of the Holy Ghost because the Bible says that when you praise him he dwells in the midst of your worship and your praise that's what it takes you ever been in a service where it just seemed like things just couldn't work it just seemed like things just weren't working you know why it's cause in that service never praised God they never worshiped God they never took time never took a moment to lift up their hands and magnify the Lord when you praise and worship God he sees that and he dwells among that place stand to your feet if you will if you want to receive more from God if you want to step up to the next level if you want to intensify just another degree for some of us here is that next step it's just one degree that's going to make all the difference in your life and I'm not trying to minimalize the third person of the Trinity and he is a person he's not an it God forbid he's not an it he's the third person of the Trinity he is our God you want more of the Holy Ghost you've got to get in the presence of God and that takes worship and praise you want the comforter to walk beside you to help you to lock arm in arm with you we've got to live a life of praise we get to live a life close to God sanctified holy the Bible says be not filled with wine wherein is excess but be filled with the Spirit God let us be filled with your spirit I want us all to come around these altars tonight and if you do anything just worship God just magnify him just lift your hands and praise him because when you praise and worship God he comes down in the midst and the Holy Ghost speaks to us it is essential this day and age that we receive the power from on high God help us tonight
Praise the Lord, if you will. Thank God for what He's doing. Thank you, Jesus. You know, He speaks to us in the valley. He speaks to us on the mountaintop, too, doesn't He? How many has been there? You've been in the valley. You've been on the mountain. You know that God's still the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let's go ahead and close this service out. Then I'm going to hand it over to Brother Matthew. He's got some announcements to make. Let's stand and ask God to bless this. We need the Holy Ghost. Because you know what's going to happen? Today is Wednesday, but Thursdays are coming. You don't know what you're going to face tomorrow. You don't know what battle's ahead. But I know one thing. I know who is around the corner who's going to help me. Amen. Heavenly Father, we love you tonight. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your truth. Thank you for your word. I pray that you bless every soul, every individual in this congregation. And I pray that you touch us. We love you, God, and we need you. And we ask that you'd help us, God, to look up to heaven from whence cometh our help. We know that our help comes from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. We love you tonight. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen.